Hello and welcome. Uh, taking a bit of a note from one of my idols, Trump, not the president of the United States, but the Trump SC, the card player. I'm going to be doing a bit of a, a card review here for Gwent. So uh, we're looking here. We're looking at this first card. We'll get right into it. And I'll explain the new mechanics as we go along. This is Isagrim Outlaw. Three power, gold card from the Skoatel faction. Choose one, spawn a silver card or spawn a silver Skoatel unit. Uh, and I'm generally speaking, I'm going to try and go with these a little bit of a brisk pace. Now, uh, I'm not like a master of every faction in every way play. So I'm just going to you know, give an insight to my perspective, which is probably going to be skewed right now, at least towards monsters, Skellige, and a little bit of Nilfgaard. <clears throat> so something like Skotel, a little bit less strong. So Spawn will allow you to basically, dis if you play Hearthstone, to discover a unit from your deck. You get to choose from one of three choices, and you pick one, and you bring it out and play it. So this will allow you to discover, quote unquote, uh, a silver special card or a silver Skotel unit. I don't on a gold body, I don't think this is all that powerful. Because uh, you already have, in Skotal, you already have a lot of cards to tutor out silver cards. And I don't think there's a lot of silver Skotal units you want to really bring out. So maybe this gets useful over time. But as it stands right now, I don't think it's all that powerful. And again, like I could totally be completely wrong on these. And I'm totally willing to accept that. This is just my current perspective, my current level of knowledge. So we're going to the next one. This is a Skeleton card, another four. Gold body with a bit of a spell effect. Play a cursed unit from your deck or spawn a silver unit from your opponent from your opponent's deck. What? Does that mean you steal it or do you just copy it? If you steal it, that could be pretty crazy. That didn't say steal, right? Now this is just spawn a silver skill tell. So you can steal or let's let's assume it does steal it from your opponent's deck. You not only disrupt their combo, potential combo, but also you get to look into what kind of deck they're playing. And you get to play a, a potentially good silver card. But then again, you think, why don't I just play a good silver card in my deck and try and tutor that out, right? It's a pretty common uh, way of thinking that <laughs> Trump actually brings up a lot. Is that why would I try and, you know, get my opponent's cards and I can just play my own good cards, right? <laughs> or you can play a Christine from your deck, which I think is actually pretty awful because there's already... Uh, that one silver card that tutors out a Christine from your deck. And you'd probably just rather play that instead. And as opposed to taking up a gold scot and the gold body on both these isn't even on that special. <clears throat> okay, on wait into this move. Uh, moving on to the next one, monsters Weavis Incantation, uh, strengthen all allied relics, which is a tribe by two, or play a bronze or silver relic from your deck and strengthen by two. Strengthen all allied relics by two, or play a bronze or silver relic from your deck. I kind of like this. I don't off the top of my head know the extent of the relic tribe. When I mean tribe, I basically just mean monster to or not monster tag, but a tag on a card. So, for example, like a like machines have the machine tag or whatever it is. Whatever synonym of machine. Uh, so uh, strengthen all allied relics by two. This is. It's interesting, but. Hmm, or play a bronze or silver relic from your deck. So you, you either you either like take away a round with like a basically a, a one sided. Uh, Yennefer Conjurer. No, she's not even Yennefer Conjurer. Con they got it mixed up. <laughs> uh, you, you either get a one-sided Yennefer, but only on relics. And I don't think that's very strong. Because if like, you, you play Yennefer whenever you know you're going to be able to basically have it one-sided anyway. So this is just kind of adding this, like, this huge drawback with not much of an upside. Uh, so that's kind of not all that great. Or you can play... Oh, but it does say Strengthen instead of Boost. So that's kind of interesting. I don't know to what extent the implications have, but strength and over boosting is a little bit more notable. Uh, player play a bronze or silver relic from your deck. Now that one's kind of interesting because it's kind of that turns into almost like a. I don't want to say like monsters nest because monsters nest just takes from a very specific pool, but this allows you to pull any. So so if you're playing like a relic deck, you probably want to put this in. So that's what I'll say. Outside of a relic deck, uh, which I. Off the top of my head, I don't really remember what relics are, but if you are playing a deck like that, or maybe in the future, this is probably a card you definitely want to consider. <clears throat> Letho Kingslayer, hey. Another Letho card. Nilf card, of course. Choose one, destroy an enemy leader on the board, and set self to 11. Or play a bronze or silver tactic from your deck. Now, this is really interesting. A lot of these gold bodies, I, and I'm calling them gold bodies because they're basically spells, but with a little bit of a gold uh, you know, card that's going to be played on the field. 
So it's not entirely useful, uh, useless if you don't get anything, but also it's a little bit more tempo uh, as opposed to just the spell effect. Which is something that you kind of wanted back <laughs> like when you were playing Gold Weather, but then you had to kind of sub in uh, Roach. But anyway, so destroying enemy leader on the board sets up to 11. That's interesting, but how reliable is that, right? Like how often are you actually going to be able to say, oh, hey, you played this leader and now I'm going to play my, my Letho. And how often are the leaders actually anything you want to destroy? Uh, the only one that I can think of off the top of my head is um, Harold, right? Harold is probably the only one you actually want to actively destroy. Everything else is just uh, is just a couple points, and who cares? You can do damage it or you don't. It doesn't really matter. Setting yourself to 11 as a gold card is really not very good. That seems like a very conservative... Like, sure, you can probably get this card to go off every game, but how... You have to wait for them to play their leader, and their leader has to be, you know not <laughs> like discard brand because that's only gonna be two points i think that that the half of the effects is really weak but it's interesting i just i don't feel like enemy leaders currently oh that's right they did add new leaders but it cur currently the leaders aren't anything worth destroying uh play a bronze or silver tactic from your deck it's kind of like um john is it john natalis that does that and i think john talus you just put in john talus right why would you use less how to do it oh wait no no, no. this is this nilf guard not northern realms right so in that sense, if you're playing, if you're trying to tutor out some uh, as bronze or silver tactic for your deck, that could be interesting. But I think the other half of this ability is effectively worthless as it stands right now. But if they do have a, if they do have like high strength leaders in the future that you need to counter, then you play Letho. There you go. Okay, <clears throat> Geralt Yerdin. Reset all units and remove their tokens. Reset all units and remove their tokens. What does it mean by remove their tokens? So if you play a Arachnus Behemoth will it remove all those little three little spiderlings. Will it kill the will, will it remove all tokens or just the tokens that are being spawned by a particular unit? This one's a little bit confusing for me. Reset all units, though. Reset all units. Reset resetting all units alone could be really interesting. So if you if you're playing like a strength in if you're playing a strength in uh What's my call? It's Skellige deck, and you're just strengthening, which can't be reset. No, it can be reset though. Can it? No. No, it can't be reset. Okay, yeah, that's right. You can't can't be reset. But then your opponent is playing a deck that's heavy on boosting. That could be really interesting. This seems like either broken or useless. <laughs> I'm interesting to where to see where it falls. Because when it says reset, that means like if you have a if you're going up against like three Farseers that all have gone up to like twenty strength, right? Or uh, the Dole Plathana Protector or whatever they're called. And you just reset those down to two strength. That seems crazy. That seems absolutely insane if you actually do that. You save this for your last card and get the spell towel. And you just set their strength down to like four. Like total. Because they played like two Plathana Protectors and you played this. That could be, that could be, assuming I'm, I'm interpreting this right. That could be uh, mental. And a really good counter pick too. Or a tech pick. <coughs> uh, Cell Turk. Salt, Salt, Salt Kirk, Northern Realms Guard, seven strength gold, dual and enemy three armor. Uh, dual. Uh, let me double check this to make sure I'm saying it right. Uh, dual unit with the dual ability will damage a chosen enemy unit and then suffer damage from that enemy. Damage being equal to the power, repeatable until one unit dies. I'm a little bit confused about how this actually works in practice. So let's say this this does this has seven seven damage right, and you go up against a unit that has six. So you do what? You do seven damage. No, let's say it's, let's say it has uh, okay, yes, it has six. You do seven damage, and then it just dies, right? So in that sense, it becomes like a thirteen strength gold three armor. But if you use it against a eight strength unit, you'll do the seven damage. It'll do eight back. You'll go down to two, and then it'll damage it back. So basically, you're trying to hit anything. This seems, this card, this seems, like dueling seems really confusing. <clears throat> I guess so. It's it's not necessarily about the points, it's about guaranteeing uh guaranteeing a kill. So long as it's damage doesn't go above ten, but then it's just gonna damage it back. For, I don't know. Dueling seems it, dueling just seems like a really weaker version of assassinate from north uh from north Nilfgaard. I think it, I, I I'd have to see it in action to really see how this this plays out. Maybe if like you had some way to like like put a bunch of armor on this card before it gets played, 
So then you could just like you could like let's say you put 20 armor on this, right? Then you could basically kill anything in the game because you just keep damaging by seven, 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 and the enemy would just be hitting your armor over and over again, right? But you'd have to be able to put armor on it before it comes out. Which I think is difficult, either impossible to do right now or very difficult to do. But we'll see. This card dueling could be really interesting in the future, but as a stand right now, I think it's a little bit weak. Or not necessarily weak, just like why would you use that when you can do you can do other things anyway banish your hand and draw that many cards this is really crazy ban it let me is there a keyword for banish no okay so banish just means you're uh it's not going to the graveyard it's, it's being eliminated at least i think that's what it means it's being eliminated uh this card is really crazy <laughs> not because i think it's good <laughs> but because eliminating your entire hand and then drawing that many cards this seems like a, like a very specific and it like one. Uh, I was going to say one of, of course, it's going to be one of <laughs> it's like a <clears throat> in a very specific deck archetype. This could be like the card that makes it work. And this is like a really weird design because I don't think there's really they haven't designed any other cards that are like that. And this is kind of like not even Hearthstone really does something like this. This is interesting, but I don't see where it's useful. Like just with my like, you know, one minute that I'm going to spend on this card. But in the future, this could be really interesting. <clears throat> and since it's neutral, it can be played to anything. Uh, Cadav Cadavrine? Choose one. Deal two damage to an enemy and all units share its categories. Does that mean tribe or tag? Deal two damage to an enemy and all units that share its categories. I don't know what categories means. Or destroy a bronze or silver neutral unit. Or destroy a bronze or silver neutral. It has to be a neutral unit. Maybe categories means faction. As in like monsters. Uh, I don't like this card or right off the bat. I think it looks really, really bad. As, and I also don't really know what it means by categories and by specifically neutral. Does that mean it can't be aligned to a faction? It seems really weak. We'll, we'll just move on from there. Not again, not spending too much time thinking too much into this and all the ways it's applicable. Just kind of a real quick, you know, 10 second. Let's get it over with. Even though I said one minute before, I actually mean like 10 seconds. Uh, Melane, deal four damage to the units at the end of a row. This is kind of like the card that Hearthstone just got, crushing walls that deal that destroys the units on the sides. Uh, so this is where positioning comes in. Uh, we'll come in. Um, you have to think about it a little bit more when you're going up against decks that run Melane. Deal four damage to the units in the other row, so it's going to do eight. So it becomes a thirteen point silver, which isn't all that great, but maybe it kills something. But then you just have to like, if maybe it doesn't get that, they play around it, or it hits armor, or it just hits nothing uh, useful. This card seems weak. I don't really like it. Move on. Uh, maybe like they could have, like this seems just that seems so weak. At the end of a row, and if there's only one unit on that row, you're only going to do four damage. Seems really, it seems too easy to play around and everything. It just seems weak. Striga. This is a relict. Deal eight damage to a non-monster unit. I don't I really dislike things like that because it's entirely reliant on your opponent, uh, like for the most part, not playing the faction you're playing, which is gonna be monsters, of course. Uh, I really dislike this at a base level. Uh the power level of it, deal eight damage to a non-monster unit. Deal eight damage to a non-monster unit. It's kind of like it's a little bit better version of Melane. Um, like its power level, I think is fine because you're targeting and the eight damage, but you have to choose a non monster unit. That seems really like a frustratingly limiting uh, strong, but I wouldn't rely on it. And Durain, whenever an enemy is damaged, boost this unit by one. Whenever an enemy is damaged, boost this unit by one. Whenever it has to be an enemy damage boosted by one. Whenever enemy, that's just like an Axeman, like a not as good Axeman and it's silver. How is this not just a, like a worse Axeman? Like sure, Axeman has to be uh, locked to a row uh, to, you know, from the opposing row, get damage from them. But like usually whenever you're playing, you're you set your Axeman up in such a way that will take advantage of that. Like, you know, you're using Harpooners, you're using Skelga Storm, you're using Rain, things like that on a specific row. And you know damage is going to be coming from that one aspect. And uh, this it says 
it says boost too. So yeah, it's not even like a strengthen. Uh, this seems really weak. Would uh, I rather just play Axeman and everything else that comes along with a Axeman deck and not put this card in there? And, like Axeman's not even all that popular anyway. But then again, if you're playing if you're playing something that does a lot of wide damage, like playing um tremors, maybe this could be useful. Because then let's say you play tremors and you hit like eight enemy units, right? Or you play like Yennefer or something. And this instantly goes up to like thirteen silver. But thirteen silver is like the bare minimum it needs to be, and it just need this needs set up. But it could go above that. So maybe you do play this in an Axeman deck. Uh, I don't know. But it's being boosted, though. And like as we saw, that, that Geralt Arden, I think it was. Or whatever it was. Yerden. You're just going to get reset. <laughs> and you'll be sad. I don't know. Uh, you, like, you already have three Axemen and like an Operator. I don't think it's necessary to have another Axeman effect. And Axeman, I think, boosts by two, right? No, no, no. These boost by one. Never mind. Lesser demons, move a unit from your deck to your hand, then discard a random card. This is neutral, move a unit from your deck to your hand, then discard a random card. This seems like it could be pretty powerful in Skalaga. Like, you tutor a unit from your deck, and then you discard, you know, a skirmisher or whatever it's called. It seems really powerful. I really like this card. Assuming I'm reading that right. Like, again, all of these have the caveat, assuming I'm interpreting them right. Move a unit from your deck to your hand. I'm assuming it means you just get to pick whichever one you want. I mean, you have to pick any unit. Like, could that even be gold or need to be bronze? Then discard a random card. Even if it was bronze, that'd still be really good. I like it. Wyvern shield boosting unit by the base power of a bronze or silver unit in your hand. Boost a unit by the base power of bronze or silver unit in hand. And this is just kind of like a like a weaker neutral version of, um. The spy card from Nilfgaard, whatever he's called, lookout, uh, scout, whatever it is. We see unit by the base power of bronze for unit in your hand. That has to be the base power, which means it could be a spy. It doesn't say it has to be uh, loyal. So if you know you're playing, like, I just feel like this mechanic works in reveal. This mechanic works in reveal. Because you're already revealing cards and you don't necessarily have to be limited to a spy. You can also do things like Geralt. So this just seems like a strictly weaker version of that. And like even in that reveal deck, it's still not it like it's a reliable combo, but it's not outside of that realm. It's just not that powerful. Uh, I don't think this card will get much play. At least I doubt it anyway. Bone Talisman. This is a Skalaga. Choose one. Resurrect a Bronze Beast or heal an ally. Okay, that has to be a Bronze Beast, which is weird. Or heal an ally and strengthen it by three. Uh, this seems really weak. You're limiting in what you can uh, revive. Uh, you're healing an ally and strengthen it by three. There are already cards that already pretty much do that. Like uh, you already have armor smith. I think it is it armor smith. It's something like that. You already have a card like that. Yeah, whatever. Whatever the cards are called. <laughs> you know the one I'm talking about. The one that heals and shields. Uh, so instead of getting. Like the, the card that does the, the heal plus the shield or the armor rather, <clears throat> you're taking a bit of a hit and not strengthening, but you get that like seven strength gold body or not gold body rather. You get the seven strength bronze body you put on the field. Also, whenever you're getting hit for damage, typically putting more armor on it is not always a bad thing or it's not necessarily a waste. So uh, this just seems like like why why. Like resurrected bronze beast, that's not very good. You already have plenty of revives in your pieces of Freya. This seems bad. Just seems bad. We are on to the next one. Wench. Spawn a bronze northern realm machine and boost it by two. I like this. It allows you to tutor your machines, which are very vital in a machine deck. I like it. It's good. It's kind of like a, a river scout without needing uh without needing one on the field already. It just makes your your combo more reliable. <laughs> 